Hey everyone, by now we've probably all heard about the Hertz deal to add 100,000 Teslas to their rental fleet. This is obviously a huge win in Tesla's book for a bunch of reasons, but of course, anytime there's good news for Tesla, the media outlets have to find some way to cover it in a negative light to protect their financial interests. It's with that in mind that we read this article coming from Moody's and MarketWatch called, As Hertz Gets Ready to Add Tesla Vehicles, Rental Car Bonds Could Get Riskier, Moody's. With the secondary title being, after roughly six months, electric vehicles tend to hold only about 60% of the value of the manufacturer's suggested retail price. And that's where we get the real argument being made here. It's that EVs lose their value faster than ICE cars. The article says, electric vehicles depreciate in value at a steeper pace than those driven by internal combustion engines, see chart, mainly because the technology is changing so quickly. According to a Moody's report released Tuesday, it shows that after roughly six months, electric vehicles tend to hold only about 60% of their value of the manufacturer's suggested retail price. But it takes closer to 30 months for the same drop in value to occur on gas-powered vehicles. And when it comes to EVs, generally speaking, this is true. I'm not disagreeing with it. Anyone can pick up a used Nissan Leaf or Chevy Bolt for a massive discount if it's used. But what this analyst is entirely missing is that this possible Hertz deal is with Tesla, not EVs in general. So when Moody's senior vice president said that in coming years, rapidly evolving EV technology will reduce market values for older models, they clearly didn't do their research specifically on Tesla. So to sum up what the article is saying, Hertz is going to be buying EVs, EVs lose their value much faster than ICE cars, and therefore rental car bonds will be riskier. Simple enough theory, let's actually look into it. And it takes all of two seconds to see that the writer of this article didn't even bother to do a simple Google search. If we look at the resale value of the Tesla Model 3, which is the model that Hertz said they'd be ordering, we can see that the Model 3 is actually on track to have the best resale value of any car ever tested. Now, it's a bit tricky because Tesla Model 3s have only been around since 2017, but they really didn't start hitting large scale manufacturing numbers until 2018. So they're only only just now hitting their three-year-old mark, but let's look into it. If we compare the Model 3 resale value after one year of depreciation, we can see that it only lost 5.5% of its value. If we take a look at the BMW 3 Series, which many people say is comparable in its feature set to a Model 3, the BMW lost 38.2% of its value. That's actually insane to have that large of a difference. And if we look at this data from IC Cars, we can see that actually the Model 3 has the least depreciation out of any car ever tested. The second place is the Ford Ranger, which depreciated more than double the Model 3. We even see outlets like Car and Driver, which tend to favor more legacy automotive companies, saying, Tesla Model 3 bucks trend of electric vehicles depreciating rapidly. The average vehicle coming off a three-year lease has lost 52% of its value, but a Model 3 only loses about 10% one study finds. That's showing a depreciation of about five times less than the average car. That's not only not more risky, like this Moody analysis would lead you to believe, but it's actually a huge value retaining asset. I did some research on how to evaluate rental car companies, and this chart shows a generic rental company cost breakdown. The part to focus on here is the depreciation expense of 25 to 35% of revenue, which in this example is just the depreciation of their fleet of vehicles. They show that in eight months, they assume a 25% depreciation rate. And if we look at Hertz specifically, according to their VP of communication, the average age of a car pushed out of the company's fleet is nine months old. Now, we don't know their specific depreciation, resale, or original purchase costs of their cars, but we do know that if a car depreciates less, that's more revenue for Hertz. What I'm trying to get at is that buying cars that depreciate significantly less than an industry average could be a huge opportunity for increased profits for Hertz. It's absolutely ridiculous for the Moody's analyst to say that EVs depreciate more than ICE cars, therefore Teslas must also depreciate more than ICE cars. What kind of editor lets this lack of scrutiny actually be published? And even worse than that, who gets to call themselves an analyst when this is the level of research they're doing? So Moody's basically has two options here. They can either say that their analyst didn't realize that actually Tesla Model 3s lose their value significantly slower than ICE vehicles, in which case they're absolutely terrible at their job. 
Or they can say they knew Tesla's Model 3s retained their value incredibly well, but they still wanted to publish something that would put Tesla in a bad light, so they only looked at EVs as a whole. Both looks are absolutely awful for someone who's calling themselves an analyst. And here's a little food for thought for you. Moody's is an investor service company whose primary offering is financial research, giving credit risks on companies. So just out of curiosity, let's see what they think about Tesla. And when you look at that, Moody's gives Tesla debt a junk rating. According to the Wall Street Journal, stock market investors' strong confidence in the company is in stark contrast to the junk rating on Tesla's debt from S&P Global Ratings and Moody's Investor Services. Tesla's trillion dollar peers all have AAA ratings according to data provider fact set. So look, I'm not saying anything shady is going on behind the scenes, but what I will say is that in this latest analysis with Hertz bonds becoming riskier, they've really missed their mark. It's not just that they got it wrong, but they got it exactly backwards. If anyone has an idea for why the analysts put out this garbage, let me know because I'm open to options. Other than trying to spread FUD about Tesla or sheer incompetence, I can't think of a good reason. This would probably be a good time to talk about why media outlets might be motivated to spread FUD about Tesla. The answer is because they have a financial motivation to cover Tesla negatively. Let me explain. Media outlets make a significant portion of their revenue by selling ads to other companies. For example, when you go read articles, you may get a Ford or Nissan ad on the side. The relationship with automotive companies go beyond just advertising. It invades nearly every aspect of the media outlet. For example, if a company's coming out with a new car or they want to build hype around an old one, they might pay a media outlet to write an article about the new car, but you, the reader, might never know that the article you just read from a media outlet was actually actually paid to be written by Ford or GM. They'll even give the outlet specific details the media needs to mention in their articles that puts their products in the best light possible. The relationships between these media outlets and the automotive manufacturers is incredibly strong and it has been for years. And why automotive manufacturers specifically? Well, there are actually a bunch of reasons, but one of them is that if you look at the lists of the top 25 global advertisers by total spending, Volkswagen, Toyota, General Motors, and Ford, they're all in there. This is billions of dollars a year that go into paying media outlets just like this one. And if you're a traditional media outlet, a significant amount of your revenue comes from these car manufacturers. Many media outlets have a financial incentive to cover these car manufacturers in a positive light. If they were to write something terrible about Ford, for example, Ford might be less likely to come to them in the future with a lucrative deal. Not to mention, if you're being paid by automotive manufacturers for advertising, there is a major conflict of interest in covering them. It's a constant give and take with these media outlets not wanting to bite the hand that feeds them. So if that's the case, why is Tesla any different than the likes of GM, Ford, Volkswagen, and all the others? Well, one main reason. Tesla doesn't pay for advertising. So when these media outlets cover two different companies and one of them is paying them and Tesla isn't, well, you can see why they might have a hard time trying to remain unbiased. However, I think with a lot of these media outlets, the idea of remaining as unbiased as possible is a completely foreign one. They are simply mouthpieces for whoever pays them the most. And we've even found cases of legacy automotive companies paying for media outlets to lie about Tesla to deceive their audiences. So a word to the wise when reading articles like this one, follow the money. And on that note, if you appreciate my work where I call out media outlets and analysts for being terrible at best and manipulative at worst, consider supporting me on Patreon. You could be part of this wonderful crew and get your name on the list. As always, huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're the reason that I can keep making videos like this. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. If you liked this video, give me a like. If you loved it, feel free to subscribe. I put out videos like this one a few times a week. All right, see you on the next one.